Hello everyone, this is Sula Bagarwal, working as a network consultant for Cisco Systems for various US service provider customers and helping them to maintain their network. Today I'm going to take you through a session for, on VR for learning and training, that is immersive learning through virtual reality. That's a small intro about myself. As I've already spoken about me that I help maintain stable uh, network for various US service provider customers. I'm also a public speaker and an augmented and virtual reality enthusiast, and I enjoy traveling and a cricket lover. So let's have a look at the evolution. There were legacy systems at the back. You need to take five days or six days to get everything done. The setup, the plugin and plug play, everything right from start to bottom. It used to take time. There were not much automation at the back then there. But now with smart tools, there's increased automation. There are Python scripts running at the back end. Any other language, there are servers on the cloud, there, there is analytics. Now you have a lot of smart tools. But what's next? What's the next uh, technology that coming into picture? Whether it's AI, crypto, augmented reality, that's AR, or VR, that is virtual reality. So what I'm going to talk today about is on virtual reality. So what is virtual reality? So it can be referred to as an immersive multimedia that replicates an environment that stimulates a physical presence in places of an imagined world and allows the user to interact in that particular world. At the left, you can see a kid playing on a device, a VR device. And on the right, you can see a lady playing on that device. That is actually my mother. So there's a generation gap, but you can see my mother is also happy playing on that particular device since there's an immersive experience, an immersive feeling which she is going through. So it creates sensory experiences, which can include sight, touch, hearing, and smell. It's interactive in real time. It aligns users to enter and interact with virtual objects. There's real time simulation and interactions in an imaginary world. So that is what virtual reality is. But let's have a look at the history of virtual reality. More than one person have been involved in the development of this technological system. In 1950s, there was a visionary cinematography, Martin Hillick who built a single user console called Sensorama. You can see here the Sensorama picture. This enabled the user watch television in three dimensional ways. You can imagine in 1950, the cinematography being in 3D, right? That was a huge thing at that point of time. In 1965, even Sutherland envisioned ultimate display, which was later termed as a sword of chemicals. So this started the process. And in 1991, finally a commercial entertainment VR system virtuality was released. But till then, it was not affordable. It was only back in 2012 when Oculus Rift Kickstarter started that it, the virtual reality came into mainstream awareness and it made it more generally affordable. Now have, let's have a look at the types of virtual reality. There's non-immersive, immersive, and window on world. What is a non-immersive one? There's a large display, but doesn't surround the user. And in immersive, you have a VR box. Uh, you have the perception of being basically present on that in world. The one which I'm going to show you today, it's a, on a 360 degree view, browser view, but you can put the same VR box on yourself and that's an immersive experience. Then there's window on world, where you display a three-dimensional virtual on a regular desktop without any user specialized movements tracking environment. Let's go ahead and see what are the VR benefits. There's high engagement and easier tracking with the help of VR. As you can see here, a medical practitioner learning medical examinations are done than a military person seeing the combat stuff. There's rich visual and special cues to aid memory. There's also a delivering of a physicality in the classroom setting. There you can go and see uh, in an immersive view that you are present in a classroom itself. Here you can see a bunch of guys who feel they are playing football. Then there is an asynchronous learning as assessment. And also there is the avoiding expenses of cost on time. Since you need not travel somewhere, you'll save cost and also you save time since you can virtually experience the whole environment, the whole thing there itself. So imagine this, that before going on a battlefield, the whole ter terrain is on a VR system. And you can uh, have an experience of that battlefield within a virtual reality system. So you know how the battlefield will look like. So that's how a VR can benefit the whole entire system. VR for Cisco products. What if we can have a virtual environment? which lets you explore the products. 
an avatar experience letting you walk rotate move and get the details of those products knowing the products functionalities usability and behavior so what if you can have all those and the outcomes to that will be virtual immersive experience of those products the revolutionizing the learning and training of that particular thing the training of new employees consider myself when i was a new employee i didn't see the cisco boxes or someone joins in he hasn't seen the cisco boxes or has never been to a data center so what if it, he can have a virtual experience of all those products him being in a data center and seeing what a cisco asr 1k box looks like or what a, a nexus 9k looks like so that way he will know how this product looks like what are the product info of that particular products and uh, he will have an overall view and once he visits in reality those products he will have an view of all those products and an immersive 360 view of that particular product the solution to get it is a vr device for example you can oculus quest our uh, development engine unity or react 360 and 3d models which can be used for making the 3d models the sketch of blender for our visualization now let's move on to our demo so here you go welcome to vr cisco where you can view learn and engage in 360 degrees display through either desktop or headset it's a cross platform framework which can be used on an oculus device or on a google cardboard vr or on the browser of a desktop of mobile yes on the mobile also you can view this so let's move on to the virtualized world so now currently we are in a data center on the left you can see the product catalog on the right you can see the product info so let's have a view of 360 degree view of this data center we can also play sound and uh, minimize the sound and make it as per our requirement let me play a sample of the sound all the enabling of the whole process and disabling the sound i just showed a sample process so where uh, at the right you can see here we can view the different models and learn and immerse about the different products so let's move on to the product catalog so you can see the routers and switches and the info of the routers and switches at the right here you can see what are what does a router do it directs traffic and it chooses the most efficient route for information what does a switch do it connects various devices on a single computer network so that's how a new person or someone coming in will have a product view and the product info on the right so let's move on to the routers we will have an asr 1k asr 9k crs and ncs at the right you see the various advantages of the router so let's dig down into an asr 1k ESR stands for Aggregation Services Router. It offers industry-leading performance services, etc. And let's move into an ESR 1006. You can see here we get a 360-degree view of an ESR 1006 Cisco router. So here we can see the different uh, parts of the router. Uh, it supports dual route processor. It supports up to 100 Gbps throughput. Uh, it's a six rack unit form factor so it gives an overall uh, view of to a user who is seeing this immersive view that how an asr 1006 looks like as i already said uh, we might not move around since there, there is restrictions while we do on browser but on an vr device you can go around and uh, the enhancement would be to plug in and plug play the modules and get the latest information Now let's move into an ASR 9K. There are various ASR routers here. We'll take one uh, out of those. Let us take an ASR 9022. So you can see here an ASR 9022 that is being seen, and so this gives a view of how an ASR 9022 looks like. The airflow, as you can see here, there is front to back. The maximum capacity would be 160 kbps. There's 20 line line cards, two RPs, and seven credit cards. and it is a two period a solution trust me so now let's move on to the switches and take a catalyst switch and on the right you can see there is the information about the switch as well what are the advantages of the switches so let's move on to the catalyst so the catalyst switches come in a variety of ethernet based platforms this provide high performance switching solution ideal for public service providers so we go on to 6513 and you can see here the And I have the catalyst six five one three. Here we can see the fans, the fan stators, the various modules where we can plug and play the uh, different uh, SPAs or uh, other stuff. Uh, and 
Uh, it's a 13 slot Catalyst 6513 switch, which is ideally suited for high performance. Uh, it has a 2 dbps uh, DB system performance and 4 dbps with ESS. The support up to 6000 watt power supply. So that's an overall view of a Catalyst 6513 Cisco uh, switch. So let's move on to the switches away and see if, if we can traverse to the Nexus 9. If we can go, we'll take a deep dive into the Nexus 9 device now. The switches deliver a fixed, agile, low cost application centric infrastructure. So let's go on to a Nexus 9508. And we'll also uh, consider Nexus 951C seeing what are the differences that you can see in a line card slot. In the 9508, we see there are eight line card slots, two supervisor slots. It can be used for Nexus 2000 aggregation also. And the AFO is fun to that. So you can see there are eight line card slots, and this is a Nexus 9508. It supports non blocking configuration of up to 64 ports of 100G, 288 ports of 40G, and 1152 ports of 10G. Right. So, so let's now move on to the Nexus 9516. We'll go to Nexus 9000 and let's go on to the Nexus 9516. So, here you can see they, it has 16 line card slots and two supervisor slots. So, we go and see there are more slots than the previous one. The previous one has had a 954, it has a eight line card slots. So, once a person comes in into this virtual life experience, you can easily see the differences. And it has the ACI support too and it has an airflow of front to back. It can meet the most demanding requirements of enterprise service providers and data centers. So that's the product info of an access network. And in an VR experience, again, it would be a complete virtualized experience where you can go and traverse and see the overall product. So let's move on to the product catalog again. So we are back to our initial place. So that's where the use case will come in, right? So a newcomer coming in can visualize this products, or this can be used on on-site trainings where your cust or customer deployments are going on, where a person who is doing a deployment can see how a deployment is done. That's an example of where a VR use case can take you. That's all from the demo. Let's move on to the key takeaways. An immersive customer experience using enhanced visualizations to add into reality. Uh, virtual reality is a growing industry, definitely, and it makes learning and training easier, which is the point of our session. PC and specialized hardware are getting better, faster, and cheaper because of development in VR. Earlier, as I said, the VR products weren't that affordable, so no one could buy it. But now, uh, more and more people are buying it. It's in gaming industry, tourism industry, everywhere, since the products are getting cheaper, and now it's available on mobile as well. So what are the opportunities ahead? Why VR? The VR market, we can virtually experience the network and product details. So here I are, uh, what I showed was virtually experience the product details. What if you could view the network details as well? That would really uh, help the network engineers, the person who's troubleshooting to get all the input. So that's definitely an opportunity help. The network visualization. If you can visualize the network and insights data, where the traffic is flowing or uh, what provider edges are linked to which routers, where are the route reflectors, everything. So you can ins have an insight of that data that's definitely going to solve certain issues and people can now have a better view of the network. Customer experience, definitely increasing the customer experience. It enhances the customer experience via virtual reality, where uh, you are taking into consideration the immersive experience a user comes into. The business growth, the business growth is definitely there since there's learning and training involved and virtual reality involved, not only in learning and training, but in different other industries, whether it be hospitalized industry, gaming industry, tourism industry, any other industry you're taking, virtual reality is coming into the picture. That's all from my side. Uh, thank you, and I hope you like the session.